In this video, we're going to be looking at pedigree publishers, uh, inbreeding, um, trial matings, and related topics. So we're in the edit all records view. And the first thing we can do in terms of calculating inbreeding is select a subject click on the edit key and calculate inbreeding. So a dialog appears and the subject that you'd selected appears here. You have an option to calculate the line breeding and we'll select that and I'll demonstrate what that actually means and you can select the number of generations to do the calculation for so we'll do it for 15 generations and then click the calculate button now we can resize the dialog the uh, the ancestors are sorted by coefficient of relationship so this is the likelihood that any genes inherited by the subject are by descent from one of these ancestors. So normally parents would be 50% and grandparents 25% and so forth. But if there is inbreeding, then the percentages will be higher. COI is the coefficient of inbreeding. Uh, so we can, for each of the ancestors, we can see what their inbreeding coefficient is. And let me just resize this. So we can see the line breeding. So for a given ancestor, we can see where it appears. Well, let's find something that's a bit more interesting. Uh, apparently we can't. So with the gaffer, it appears at generations 15 twice and generation 16 on the sire side. And if we look at this ancestor, it appears at generations 8 twice and generation 9 on the dam side. So that's the line breeding. Min gen is the minimum generation at which that ancestor appears. Count is the number of times the ancestor appears. And we've also got a fairly straightforward percentage of blood. And uh, Parents, for example, would be normally 50%, grandparents 25%, and so forth. If there is inbreeding, the percentage of blood will be slightly higher. Uh, anyway, it's an, an alternative way of looking at the coefficient of relationship. So that's on the COI tab. If we click on the report tab, we get a little bit more information. So some people are interested in what's known as the AVK, so we report that. And that number is actually based on these numbers here. So for 15 generations, you've got the total possible number of ancestors. And here we've got the total number of unique ancestors and just the number of ancestors. So the reason that this is a lot less than this is that we don't always have the sire and dam information. So we'll close that. So that's for calculating the inbreeding for a single subject. If you wish to do it for every subject, uh, just click on this one, calculate inbreeding for all. So 
So this dialog here is pretty simple. Just select the number of generations and click OK. So that's complete. And we can see the results of that in this column. So you won't see the relationship coefficient because that is relative to a given subject. So that just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, anyway, you've got the inbreeding coefficients and as with any field, you can sort them. So uh, oh, let's for a second we'll sort descending so uh, if we scroll right up to the top we can fairly quickly see the entries that have the highest inbreeding coefficient and given that this is just another field we can also include this in any pedigrees an alternative way of doing this is the pedigree calculations tab, which we can click just down here. So it will again calculate the inbreeding details for all records. Uh, you select the number of generations and then hit calculate. So this one's slightly different, so we, we still have the COI, but we also have the AVK, the number of offspring, the number of siblings, and the number of ancestors. You can save this as a CSV. call that results so if we then take a look at results just double clicking the CSV file to open it in Excel results in Excel so if you wanted to you could do additional processing on that let's just close that going back to pedigree publisher another thing I wanted to demonstrate is if we go back to edit all records and let's just scroll back to the left hand side is the relations view so by clicking on that for the given subject you can see the sire dam the full siblings sire siblings dam siblings each of the litters each of the unique uh, breedings and the ancestors in each generation so going back to the edit all records view can also demonstrate the navigator so in the navigator uh, whatever I've selected here will then appear here as the subject and we can see the relations and click on any of these relations and see the details here in this edit section and uh, we can actually edit those records as well so that's an alternative way of viewing and editing the data apart from uh, the edit all records or grid view as we call it. Now another subject that often comes up is trial matings. We don't have a specific trial mating functionality but the way it is done is that you create an actual entry and uh, start it with a hash 
So within Pedigree Publisher, any name beginning with a hash is understood to be not a real entry. So I could just say uh, Mary cross with David, for example. So I'll add a record for that. And conveniently, because this is sorted alphabetically, Uh, all of your trial matings can appear right up the top and because they're like normal records they will be easily accessible you can just go back to them and, and keep reviewing them and of course you can delete them when you finish with them so let's say with this trial mating we select a particular sire um, Select that one and I'll hit enter. Damn, so I'm going to type part of the name there. And <clears throat> okay, well, that's showing us that we haven't actually selected a dam. So we'll just try again. Uh, see how we went there. Okay, so we have now created a trial mating. So now by clicking this, I can run any of the pedigree reports and see what that looks like. And uh, as we first demonstrated, we can do um, inbreeding calculation. So we can see what the offspring of this hypothetical mating would look like. So that's how we create trial matings. Now another feature within Pedigree Publisher is the breed planner. So we can click a particular subject and uh, I'll just click on tools, breed planner and there are two halves to the window. We've got one subject here and we have another subject here. So uh, if I click that drop down I can pick another entry and I'll hit refresh. So what it's doing here is highlighting the ancestors that are in common. And again, you can select the number of generations that that is done for. So that completes a brief tutorial on inbreeding and related functions.